Do you hate J.R. Smith? Or do you hate Levitard? For those who don't know, if they Google your name, unfortunately, J.R. Smith ruined this. Take us through what happened at the end of that game one. You know, fortunately, that wasn't my first NBA Finals game because that was 18. It was game one. <laughs> That's right. Okay, thank you for the timeline. That's right. Okay. Can you imagine Well, when people find, if they don't already know, I completely messed up the end of regulation in game one. If I had done that in my first NBA Finals game, I don't know if I would have recovered. At least I had one NBA Finals under my belt. And I barely recovered from messing up game one in 2018. So uh, the Cavaliers are up one or down one. I'm already blanking here. They're uh, they're down one. Right. They're down one. So um, George Hill is going to the line, right? Yes. Two free throws for the lead. And he hits the first tie game. He misses the second. J.R. Smith gets an incredible offensive rebound. And really, all he has to do is go up and score to give them the lead. Instead, he dribbles out like they got that they already have the lead, and he grabbed an offensive rebound. And uh, I just totally blacked out in that moment. I was convinced, based on J.R. Smith dribbling out, that they had a one point lead. All I had to do was look up and see 107, 107, whatever the score was. And so that whole sequence where, you know, LeBron makes the motion, pass the ball, shoot the ball. You know, I'm convinced they're up one. So I have probably the worst four seconds of um, major broadcasting of play-by-play sports in the history of mankind. Uh, fortunately, I recover. We have a great overtime period. And uh, there are so many people I am indebted to for the rest of my life who are play-by-play people who reached out to me. And they knew I was hurting. And they were like, look, you got to put this – behind you you just have to get back on the horse you will never make that mistake ever again and get on your way and uh, you know it's it's a source of great embarrassment um you know it's probably going to be there on the tombstone when it's all said and done hopefully not but it was a learning lesson that you can make mistakes and move forward um but it's it's hard because i'm a perfectionist and even though i'm i'm far from perfect as an announcer um, anytime things go wrong, I take it hard. And that was a really rough one. I mean, I, I struggled with that for a long time. And I don't bring it up to embarrass you. I bring it up for two reasons. One, for that last point there, because some young broadcasters are going to have mistakes and they're going to take their mistake in a minor league baseball game or a summer college league like it is the NBA Finals. And because you're an adult and you're mature, even though it hits you hard, when you're going through your early parts of your career, you need to make mistakes, it's going to crush some young broadcasters. So to find out that you can still recover from making a mistake from a broadcast is a good learning lesson. And number two, I want to defend you because as much as you take blame for that, you called thousands of games. Never in that instinct moment are you thinking, okay, it's the NBA Finals, it's a tie score, a player is going to run and screw it up. It's not because you weren't paying attention to the game. It's not because of something else that had. It's you've called so many games when you watch a player do that. That's instincts. Like you just thought, okay. The guy has the ball. Something's wrong with the score. I blame J.R. Smith. I don't blame Mark Cass this year. I will defend you for that. It's funny because I've listened to everybody else's call of it, whether it was TV or the two local calls, and you could hear the, I'm not sure if he knows the score or I'm not sure if the scoreboard is right. And I got, here's another learning lesson. I got ahead of myself on that one because that was a huge game from LeBron James. If I'm not mistaken, he had 51 points. They they were severe underdogs to the, you know, Kevin Durant added Golden State Warriors who, you know, they're supposed to blow Cleveland off the map in 2018. And this was going to be such a monumentous Cavaliers victory that I was already thinking, how am I going to wrap up this broadcast? How can I make this in a historical sense? Because you get one shot when the buzzer goes and you don't want to be thinking about it. Then you want it to be what you're feeling at the moment. So you have to have a seat or two. And that opened my eyes to just make sure you know the situations. It's more important, you know, time, score, timeouts, fouls to give, just the basic stuff. And everything else will take care of itself. So it was a huge learning lesson on a huge platform that, um, you know, unfortunately didn't go my way. But as many people told me, and they told me great stories. I mean, I heard from a guy who uh, was with the Detroit Tigers who worked with Ernie Harwell. And, and again, none of the stories I got made me feel better about myself because my situation was pretty bad. But he said there was a rain delay at Tiger Stadium. And he was told that the game was done. So he went on the air. And back then, people had their 
you know, radios on in this crowd. And he goes, folks, uh, game's been called and we'll be back with you tomorrow night. You know, this is it. Tigers Radio Network good night. And the stadium gets up and leaves. And it turned out that that was incorrect information. And they started the game up like an hour later. And nobody was there because Ernie Harwell told them the game was over. It was over. <laughs> and I've heard from other guys who messed up names or uh, just messed up situations. Brian Anderson told me a great story during the, uh, it might have been uh, a regional final, where there was a shot that he said to tie the game, but it took the lead. And it was, you know, he never makes mistakes. So that was one that lives with him. And again, people don't remember them. I mean, I've met people who, uh, in and around that time, infamously remembered my gaffe and that was how they remembered me but all these years later now we're four years later i find less and less people even remember it so it you know that's what i was told is like just move on and just be better and uh and i hope i never make that mistake again i hope young broadcasters learn from that and it's just just be in the present don't worry about you know, the great, um, you know, Vin Scully line when Kirk Gibson hits the home run, you know, and in a season of improbable, the impossible has happened. It's like, you know, you just got to hope those words come at the moment. And I think I was just getting a little too cute. Yeah. And when you were going through your career and, and